this place. We do care about it. We're not going to stand by while other people, for evil purposes, try and destroy it. And I think there's nothing wrong with that kind of patriotism, nothing wrong with that kind of love of country, right or wrong in certain circumstances. Taft, California on the Democratic line. Good morning. You're on with Christopher Hitchens and Andrew Sullivan. Good morning. Good morning. I have morning. about uh, four things I'd like to address, all having to do with subjects brought up on your program. First is same-sex marriage. Number one, I believe that marriage is a financial institution and should be entered into by any parties, male or female or same sex, as need be for their own personal gratification. Number two, we have elected a cheerleader to the presidency, legitimately or illegitimately, it doesn't seem to matter, but Americans are acting like lemmings here. We're following along without questioning. Number three, white-collar crime. I believe that all white-collar criminals who have uh, inappropriately lifted money from public, private, whatever types of institutions should be in jail. Number four, loss of freedom. Big Brother is taking over. I think I'd like to take the next space shuttle to Alpha Century. Thank you. Goodbye. Mr. Uh, Hitchens, uh, mm -hmm. pick one of those. I'll skip gay marriage if you don't mind. Why? Um, Tell us what you it's think. It's somehow not my subject. Um, I, I feel like so. It, it, it can be so onerous to be the only I'm just because I'm gay doesn't mean I should be the no, only no. one supporting it. I know you support it. So tell I, I sort of feel too. no it's I it's the one or two subjects where I actually uh, very occasionally wish there was less controversy. I know it sounds like a betrayal of everything one stands for. Um one of these subjects is abortion. Um and the other well one of the others would be gay marriage. But uh, it's very hard to quarrel with Andrew about it. Um I mean what he says um about in a sense, what he invokes is the concept of equal protection, which is enshrined in the Constitution. I don't want to quarrel with the Constitution. I come from a country which doesn't have one, and I'm very glad to live in a country that does. What about loss of freedom? Um, I should add, you know, I think, I think for many, I don't want to try to seem glib about this, or flippant, but I think for many married heterosexuals, there will always be a, um, a slight brow furrowing element in this conversation. They think, well, they don't have to do this. Doesn't it kind of miss the point of their being <coughs> gay? You know, but but we, you're but never going to quite get over that is, ironic course, objection. It seems to we me. We don't have. I remember once I was in a I was in a meeting in London and, and there was a debate about this and someone said, "Look, I reject the whole idea of marriage. It's a ga ghastly institution. I don't want to have anything to do with it." And I think you're crazy to be supporting this. And I said, "Look, with all due respect, you can't reject marriage because marriage has never been offered to you. We don't even have the right to say no to it." We're, be we're beneath mm -hmm. even the choice. And all I'm arguing for is that we, as, 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 as equal people within this society, should have the right to choose to marry the person we love. Let's go to Palmdale, California, Prince Republican line. Go ahead, please. No. We're on with Chris Hitchin. Christopher, excuse me, uh, and Andrew. Uh, so okay. Hold on, we'll be back. Go ahead. Go ahead, Palmdale. How are you doing? <laughs> um, a bit early to say. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm, uh, it's kind of early in the morning, so... I have to think for a second. Oh, you but, and me both. Um, I have a little rebuttal for the uh, guy that called a little bit earlier that says he was a Vietnam veteran and cared to bash the United States as if uh, we we're supposed to be the evil people in the world. But, uh, um, and I dressed quite a few times for battle, so I know exactly what it's all about. Uh, I've listened to you guys uh, talking this morning, and he seemed to. Um, be speaking about uh, um, from a, a view from outside the United States uh, you came here from uh, England which I've been over quite a bit of the world myself and uh, I believe uh, you guys do have a point um, I think uh, the United States myself is uh, one of the best places to ever live and I, and I do believe that anyone that don't want to live here or think we do have a problem need to look elsewhere but for the question on uh, same-sex marriages uh, what do you guys think about polygamy if uh, 
if you believe in, um, if you go with the premises that same-sex marriage is, is because uh, a person want to be with another person, they want to share their life with them. Uh, could you answer that question for me, please? Sure. Um, is this gay polygamy or polygamy in general? <laughs> <laughs> polygamy can't be gay, can it? Because it, 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 the, the well, if, you, if you had gay marriage, it could be. No, I, I, I think the actual word means a man of many it women. Means, it, does, it does mean one. Polyamory, I think, was the, well, is, is the is neutral. The poly Polyandry is one woman with many a, husbands. Yes. yes. Okay. But, can, can I just answer that very specific yeah, question? pitfalls as well. <laughs> I know. Um, look, I don't believe that uh, people should have the right to marry anybody. I just think that everybody should have the right to marry somebody. Uh, gay people right now are denied the right to marry anyone at all, meaningfully. Of course, you know, they could force themselves into a heterosexual marriage and, and with all the heartache and pain and, and foolishness that that would imply. Um, I'm against legal polygamy. I think it destroys uh, a, a respect for women. I think it can undermine family life and the upbringing of children. I do not believe that of homosexual marriage. Um, I think homosexual marriage does the opposite. It actually strengthens family life and brings a whole group of people who do not have any essential rights, emotional rights and, and, and in this country into the fold of citizenship. Christopher Hitchens, uh, Bob Woodward and Dan Balls have been writing a series in the Washington Post. This is the sixth. We read some of it earlier, 10 days in September. They got access to the diary of President Bush. They got an interview with President Bush in December to talk about those first 10 days. They talked on background, off the record, on the record, with a lot of different people around the president. Have you been reading the series? No, I, I haven't actually, because I've been out of town, brother. Have you been I reading mean, I, I intend I've to. been reading it devotedly. It's an well, amazing piece of work. Well, the, the reason really I bring is. it up is because it's series like this, and the, the, why this program is here, and we don't do justice to it because we can't get enough on the table, but everybody, I would suggest, in the business of writing has read this piece. And I bring it up because I want to ask you, what do you think the impact will be on people who are in the media who will continue to write about this president after they read these pieces? I think that it, it shows without a shadow of a doubt what, what without sounding self-congratulatory, I think some of us have seen for a long time that the notion that this president is some sort of cipher, that he doesn't actually have a brain, that he doesn't actually have a politics, that he doesn't have a morality, that he doesn't have a clear grip of what is going on is baloney. He's, he's been a solid, intelligent, smart, efficient president since he got into office and what this piece does I think for the first time and it's authoritative in some ways for a certain Washingtonian coming from Bob Woodward and, and Don Balls is that, is that it shows that. It shows what I think is one of the most remarkably professional operations in terms of running a war and running a country at the same time that I've ever seen. Um, and, and the reason why he has 84% approval ratings. It's not some mysterious, we're all getting on the bandwagon. It's because people are not stupid and they've seen him do it. Well, let and me they respect him for it. Let me ask Christopher Hitchens, uh, Mr. Sullivan's on the right, I guess. Would that be fair to say a conservative? It would be relatively fair to say, yeah. Okay. A Tory. He's just commented on an article written by Bob Woodward and Dan Balls, who conservatives would think coming out of the Washington Post would not like George Bush, but for this is the sixth day of this series, and it's been... Well, that's not necessarily so. I mean, Bob Woodward is a very notorious registered Republican, conservative Republican at that. So um, the conservatives think Washington Has always Post been. And I, mean, I don't mean to undermine this piece of which I've heard great reports, but, I mean, the last series of this sort that he did was on why Dan Quayle had all these unexpected, wonderful qualities. With Dave Broder. Yeah, with, with David Broder. Though I think it's now not in the list of uh, bibliography that Mr... Uh, Woodward uh, has on the inside flap of his other books. The quail book's gone, apparently. But I don't mean to nitpick, because I was asked the other day, I was speaking somewhere or other, in California, and someone in the audience got up and read me back at every word I'd said about George Bush during the election, which was not unlike some of the things Andrew's just been saying. I said, well, would you still say that? And I said, well, what if I was right, and someone with all those disabilities, all those, that apparent lack of curiosity, that apparent inability to read for pleasure, uh, that apparent want of uh, sort of intellectual weight could still manage all these things.